Well, good morning. My name is Kathy Julian, and it is my joy and privilege to be with you today. I want to begin by asking a question. How many of you enjoy sailing or going on an ocean cruise? Anybody? Okay, yeah. When do you want to go? Anyway. <laughs> you know, how many of you, though, have been out on the water when a storm hit or the waves got really rough and you got seasick? Same hands? Yeah, it can be miserable. Not to mention scary if you start thinking about the possibility of the boat sinking, right? Well, today, we're looking at a story when there was a ferocious windstorm that hit the disciples' boat out on the Sea of Galilee. And it was a very scary time. So turn with me to Matthew 14, verses 22 to 24. That's on page 796 in the Pew Bibles. We read that immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. You see, this occurred immediately following the, the miracle of the feeding of over 5,000 people. And it was then that Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. He didn't just invite them. He compelled them to get on board. Why? Well, maybe they wanted to stay and celebrate with that crowd that would have been ecstatic of the, over the miracle of having just been fed with only five loaves and two fish. But Jesus knew that that crowd wanted to make him their earthly king, a king who would lead them in revolt against the hated Roman occupation. See, this was not God's plan, and it would only serve the motives and the desires of the people. If the disciples had stayed where they were, they might have been swayed and influenced by that great crowd of people and their desire to make Jesus their earthly king. Yes, Jesus knew it was time to get his disciples into the boat and out of there, even though strong winds were beginning to blow. You also, may be facing strong winds and difficult circumstances that are just growing more and more fierce by the day. And like the disciples, you may feel that those winds are blowing against you. And you're wondering, why? Why would God allow such fearful circumstances? And if you're in this kind of situation right now, I want to encourage you with some words from my dad. He wrote, in a mistaken effort to sell Christianity to our modern consumer culture, some evangelists have misrepresented their product. They've implied that Christians always have smooth sailing. We don't. We are not on a princess cruise, but a battleship. We're at war and people get hurt. Our faith is not a happiness pill. Our symbol is not a rocking chair, but a cross. God guarantees us a safe landing, but not a calm passage. We realize the worth of our anchor only when we endure the storm. Does this encourage you like it does me? God guarantees his children a safe landing, but not always a calm passage. And indeed, in the midst of the storms of our lives, we can know 
that God will see us through. And we must call out to our unfailing anchor, Jesus Christ, and come to him. And that is our simple but profound big idea today. No matter what storm you're going through, as we will see in Peter's life in just a moment, no matter what storm you're going through, fix your eyes on Jesus and come to him. Yeah. Come to Jesus. The experience of the disciples can be an encouragement to each and every one of us as we face scary times. And it's when we're in a storm that we can come to Jesus and rest on four assurances. First of all, God is able to use the storms of our lives for our good. God is able to use the storms of our lives for our good. And in scripture, we find two types of storms. Storms of correction, when God disciplines us, and storms of perfection, when God helps us grow in our faith. You remember Jonah, right? He was in a storm because of his disobedience and his need of correction. The disciples, on the other hand, they were in a fierce windstorm because they had obeyed the Lord and his command to get into the boat. Doesn't really seem fair, does it? Can you relate to me on that? It doesn't seem fair that they were in the will of God when that fierce windstorm hit. Did Jesus know that winds were picking up? Of course he did. He knew. But he also knew that his disciples were safer on rough water than on the land with misguided people who were trying to make Jesus their earthly king. And as they were blown about by high winds and waves, they no doubt said to one another, if only Jesus were here. And that's because once before, he was with them on this same sea during a storm. And that time, simply with his voice, he had calmed the storm when he commanded, quiet, be still. And nature obeyed its master. Yes. You see, Jesus was testing them this time by being out of the boat leaving them alone out there, tossed by the waves all through the night until shortly before dawn. Likely one of the purposes in this scary situation was that the disciples' faith and their trust would grow and be perfected through this experience. Christ knew that the day would come after his crucifixion and resurrection that he would again not be physically with them. And they would need to learn to trust him in the face of many difficulties, even though he was not with them in person. And it would sometimes seem as though perhaps he just didn't even care. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that perhaps God really isn't there and just doesn't care about what you're going through? I mean, we would much rather grow without pain and without heartache, right? But the storms of life do come while we're here on this earth. Oh, that faith and our sovereign and loving God would increase as we realize he will never leave us, nor forsake us, but will always see us through our storms as we trust in him. He has purposes for our good that are far, far beyond what we, are, we could ever ask or even imagine. Do you ever wonder how long Jesus is going to leave you tossing and turning and why in the world he has not come to your rescue? 
you're not alone. I'm sure that the disciples felt the same way. Because you see, as Christians, it is tempting to believe that obedience to God's commands will bring smooth sailing and a trouble-free life. But again, this is not true. Jesus promised us in John 16, I have told you these things that in me you might have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. So, when we find ourselves in a storm, sometimes of our own making, and sometimes, even though we've tried to be obedient to God's commands, either way, Take heart. Know that God often comes to us even when we're not looking for him. We expect to meet with Jesus in worship as we did this morning, right? But we don't always expect to meet with Jesus in a hospital room or at a funeral or in the midst of a big family blow up. But it's often in the crises of our lives that Jesus does his finest work because it's then that he has our keenest attention. Indeed, it's often in the crises of our lives that Jesus does his finest work because it's then that he has our keenest attention. Sometimes he takes us out of our storms But more often, he walks with us through them. How we must learn to face our fears with faith. To face our fears with faith. It's it's not, hear me, it is not a matter of ignoring our fears and pretending they don't exist, because they do. Would you agree with me? Absolutely, they do. But, We must face them with the only one who is greater than our fears, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He alone can can calm the storm. Sometimes he also lets the storm rage and calms the believer. It has been said that sometimes he calms the storm. And sometimes he lets the storm rage and calms the believer with peace that passes all human understanding. And as we read in Philippians 4, 6, and 7 of the Living Bible, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. I can't begin to tell you what an impact these verses have had on my life, and I pray that they will impact your life as well. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Well, a second assurance in the storms of life is that God hears our prayers. God hears our prayers. How does it make you feel to know that God Almighty hears your prayers? It's amazing, isn't it? And in the same way that Jesus saw the scary situation his disciples were in, he sees ours and he longs for us to come to him with our burdens and with our fears. I mean, think about it. If you knew without a doubt that God was listening to you 
and that he wanted the very best for you, wouldn't it give you renewed courage and hope? Absolutely it would. He is gonna see you through the storm that you're currently facing or will face. He prays, as we see in John 17. He prays because Jesus knows our needs and he cares deeply enough for us to pray. You see, Jesus prayed for all his disciples, and that includes you, and it, it includes me. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, where was Jesus when that ferocious storm hit and his disciples were still out on the raging sea? Do you remember where Jesus was? He was alone, up on the mountainside, praying. And I'm confident that he was praying for his disciples who were out on that stormy sea. So when life, when life gets really tough, may we join with Jesus and may our first course of action be to come with him to the feet of our Father, our Father God who knows us and who loves us and who calls us by name. And this brings us to our third assurance. Not only is God able to use the storms of our lives for good, and he hears our prayers, he is with us in the storms of our lives. Yeah, God is with us in the storms of our lives. God is with us and he is nearer than we think and just waiting for us to call out to him. And we see this in Matthew 14, verses 25 to 33. We read, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. I have to just stop right here. How many of you, is this a, a surprise that the word ghost is in the Bible? <laughs> it's kind of funny in a way, but it wasn't funny at the time. It wasn't, <laughs> not at all, no. Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord? If it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why did you doubt, he said. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. God promises us in Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He may not show himself in the way we think we need him, but he will always be near to us because he knows that we need him. In our story today, Jesus waited until the boat was far out to sea before he came. Why? Perhaps it was a testing of their faith and a realization of their need to depend not on themselves and their ability to row, but to depend on God. And then he showed his disciples the very thing they feared, that wind-driven, raging sea. It was only a walkway for Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? And in our own lives, Often, the things that we fear the most, such as health concerns or difficulties in our marriages or in our families or job loss or school issues, whatever it might be, these are the experiences that can actually draw us closer 
to Christ. And that's if we will call out to him and come to him for help. And eventually we will see his hand of grace and redemption in the midst of or even because of the storm that surrounds us. Indeed, God usually helps us in such quiet ways that we're not even aware of his presence. And that's because we are so totally focused on our circumstances, right? Is it possible that the reason we do not often see God's divine intervention is because we just don't expect to see it? Have we lost our sense of wonder because we've chosen to believe in the absence of God instead of his presence? Is it possible that the reason God seems so far away is that's where we have put him? We wonder where in the world he is, but because of our self-centered choices, he's exactly where we left him at a distance from our daily lives. On the whiteboard, a skeptic wrote, God is nowhere. Then a believer changed it to read, God is now here. God is now here. Wow. You see, God is closer than we think. And when we call out to him, we realize that God is with us through his Holy Spirit, our comforter, especially when the winds are against us. Well, back in the boat with the disciples, exhaustion and nerves on edge from fighting that storm likely contributed to thinking they were seeing a ghost. But in the midst of their fear, they heard the beloved voice of Jesus say to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Mm. Don't you and I need to hear that at particularly scary times in our lives. As Jesus said to his disciples, he says to each one of us, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Those first disciples were not the only ones who walked a life of faith and then got distracted and refocused on the fearful storms of life instead of on Jesus. We have all been there. But when we do look to Jesus and listen for his calming voice in the midst of the storm, he comforts us with his grace, courage, and strength. And it was Peter who demonstrated courage and faith when he saw Christ walking on that raging sea. But remember, Peter still thought he might be seeing a ghost. And that's why he said, Lord, if, 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 if it's you, tell me to walk on the water toward you. And Jesus said, come, come. I mean, you got to give Peter credit. That was an incredibly bold request. It's far easier to stay in the boat and hold on for dear life, right? But Peter got out of the boat. But even as he walked on the water, Peter's faith began to waver. And he started to sink. Why? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he began to focus on his overwhelming circumstances. And we've got to, again, give Peter credit and learn a lesson from him. Because Peter recognized his need and the fact that he was sinking. And he needed help. So he cried out to Jesus when he began to sink, not when he was already drowning. And that is a big distinction. Thankfully, Peter cried out to Jesus to save him from drowning in efforts, instead of drowning in efforts to save himself. Let me say that again. 
Peter immediately cried out to Jesus to save him instead of drowning in efforts to save himself. Too often, that's what we do, isn't it? We try to drown in efforts to save ourselves instead of going to God first. And then when we get in over our head, that's when we cry out in desperation. The storms of this life are not easy, but they are necessary. They help us grow in our knowledge of Christ and the need to come to him and to trust him and to obey his word no matter how difficult the circumstances. So rest assured, when God hears our cries for help, he immediately reaches out to catch us and to carry us through whatever difficulty we're facing. And this brings us to our fourth assurance. God will see us through our storms to safety and peace on the other side. God will bring us through our storms to safety and peace on the other side. And since he is the author and finisher of our faith, according to Hebrews 12, 2, whatever he starts, he will finish. And even if we fail along the way, and we will, he will succeed in the end. Notice what When those wild winds continued to blow, they blew even as Peter dared to walk on the water toward Jesus. Hard times continue in our lives too. Even when we determine to walk in obedient faith, Peter cried out to Jesus who immediately grasped his hand And then they walked on that water and climbed into the boat together. And it was then that the winds calmed down. Peter's experience turned out to be a blessing to the other disciples as well. They witnessed the power of Jesus Christ when he enabled Peter to walk on the water. And they also witnessed Jesus once again, conquering and calming the fierce winds. And it was then that disciples worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. Do you suppose that the same is true in our lives? Is God indeed near to us? Just waiting for us to call his name and to come to him in trust and in worship. Yes, he is near to us and just waiting for us to call his name and then come to him in trust and in worship. So what storm are you facing today? I can't help but see myself in this story. The storm of dizziness and feeling like I'm on a boat in raging waters has continued in my life for the past eight and a half years. It's, it's been miserable. It's been miserable. And there are days when I have questioned God as to why He has not calmed the storm of dizziness in my life when he is more than able to do so. What I've learned is that it's okay to question God. He wants us to be honest with our emotions and with our fears and to come to him We don't necessarily thank him for our suffering, but we can and must thank God for seeing us through to the other side. He alone can use our suffering for purposes that we cannot even see. 
sadly. Sometimes people choose to turn their back on God when he doesn't remove suffering. But when we are tempted to give up, let us remember that God is able to use the storms of our lives for our good and to bring us safely to the other side. As my sister said to me on a particularly bad day, when I was angry with God for not removing my dizziness, she said to me, if you lack faith right now, borrow some of mine. Mm. That's a beautiful part of being a member of the family of God. We get to love and pray and support one another through these storms. So I will yet love and trust the God who has and who will see me through. And I want to invite all of you right now out loud to declare this statement of faith with me. I will yet love and trust the God who has and who will see me through. Hallelujah. I hope that you can do the same as you love and trust the God who has and who will see you through whatever storm it is that you are facing or will face. The miracle we've looked at this morning exemplifies a beautiful conversation between Jesus and Peter and his disciples and for us as well. When we call out to him, he hears us and he answers just not always in the time or in the way we would prefer, right? But that's because he alone knows what is for our absolute best. And it's up to each one of us to recognize our need for this king who is above all the storms that could ever happen on this earth. His word is law. Even the wind and the waves must obey. And so must we. Our story closes with Matthew 14, 34 to 36. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The boat landed at Gennesaret near Capernaum and Bethsaida, and it was there that Jesus healed many people. Do you suppose that they knew of the storm Jesus had just come through to meet their needs? Do we remember that Jesus endured the storm of judgment and crucifixion to meet our needs and to save our souls? For that, we must imitate the disciples and bow at his feet, acknowledging that he is indeed the Son of God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Well, finally, remember this. Peter walked on the water and came to Jesus. Peter walked on the water and came to Jesus. The most important point of this story is not what Peter did, but where he was going. Not that he walked on water, but that he came to Jesus. So no matter how high the waves or how strong the winds that are battering your boat, you can triumph over them if you will but fix your eyes on Jesus and call out to him, Lord, save me. And although the Lord says what little faith you have, why did you doubt? He will reach out his saving hand to rescue you. 
You see, even a little faith can call forth the mighty hand of God. So today, right now, hear Jesus calling you to come to him with your hurts, your fears, and your sinful habits. Come to Jesus for his salvation and rescue. Come. Come to Jesus and grasp his mighty hand and hear him say to you, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Indeed, Jesus is ready and waiting to answer your call and to walk with you through the storm to a place of safety and peace. And if things are calm right now, things are going good, don't wait until the storm strikes before you respond to the love of Jesus and run into his embrace. There is no greater peace and no greater joy than to come to Jesus. Amen.